this portion is called Vayat Kanan, basically meaning I besought. It, it also has the meaning of to have mercy or to deal kindly with me. Here, this, like I said, is the last uh, month of the life of Moses and he's talking to the next generation. He's explaining to the next generation which was uh, young but their parents have all passed on except for Joshua and Caleb and he's explaining to them what it means as you're entering the land. So it's it begins uh, from chapter 3 verses 23 onwards to chapter 7 verse 11 of Deuteronomy and here Moses uh, explains that how I pray to the Lord not not he was pleading with the Lord not asking the Lord Lord I want to continue as a leader but he's pleading with the Lord Lord can you please you know uh, help me to cross over and walk in the land and uh, see it you know he's been he's He's been hearing about the land. Yeah. He's been dreaming about the land. It's come to that last point. He's he's there on the borders of the land. Lord, you know, can you can you please help me cross over? Help me cross over. It's it's like Lord, have mercy. Vayat Kanan in in that word Vayat Kanan comes the Hebrew word Kanan, which basically means to have mercy. It is the mercy of God that He gives to everybody. And here Joshua is already designated as the leader to succeed him. And it is interesting that even Moses was prevented from going into the land. Why was Moses prevented from going into the land? Because of disobedience. And what happened? He didn't sanctify the name of the Lord in the sight of his people. I mean, yes, of course, we might think, oh, that's just a small thing. Mm -hmm. But, you know, we, we, we really don't know what is small and what is big in the sight of God. So for, for what we think is small, maybe it's not a small thing. So here we, we begin to see that because he didn't sanctify the name of the Lord, God said, you know. And here in verse number 25 of chapter 3, uh, he says that he wants to see this good mountain. In Hebrew, it is ha har hato. Basically, this good mountain. So basically, he's he's basically specifying to a particular mountain he wants to see, and uh, it, because he's from this place, there is this so many mountain ranges. But he's not just talking about all the mountain ranges around Jerusalem. He's talking about one specific mountain. And uh, it is said that that specific mountain which Moses was wanting, desiring to be was that Temple Mount. It was Mount Moriah. And Mount Moriah, uh, it, it, the word Moriah is from the terms Ria, Yah, basically seen of Yah or God. So what is Moriah about? Moriah is the place that God has seen. What is this? What is important of this mount? That's where... Abraham has come to offer his son many years ago and over there after God has provided for the land he says it is seen of God that's what Yehovah Ire means and the word for teacher is more here Moses who is a more wants to see Moriah in other words the teacher wants to see the 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 place where you will be seen by Hashem itself. Isn't that really beautiful? And why is this teacher he was anxious to see this mountain? Why is why why is he so anxious to see Moriah? It's because this is where the teaching will truly come from. From Mount Moriah. Because the Bible says the Torah shall go forth from Zion and the word of the Lord from Yerushalayim. Okay? Uh, if you look in Moses' life, some people say that Moses' life is actually defined by mountains. At Mount Horeb, he was called to be a leader. At Mount Sinai, he received the Torah on behalf of Israel. On Mount Nebo, he looked into the land. 
and at the Mount of Transfiguration, he stood with Messiah, Yeshua himself. So, so yet we see that God would not listen to him. He, he, had, he had such a deep relationship with the Lord, but he's pleading with God. He's asking Lord, please, please, please. And you know, it comes, the Bible literally says, if you read the passage, it says, Enough. Moses, enough. Don't talk to me about this matter anymore. In other words, in our language, he's ba God is basically, shut up, Moses. I'm not going to do anything about it. The judgment is done. I mean, if, if, if God was like that to Moses, how about us? How, much, how many of times we have taken God for granted? And, you know, God hammers, yes, he's, he's having mercy, but, but, but he's, he's not going to get away from his word, you know. Uh, it's, it's really interesting because here the word of God is so important but many of us don't take the word of God so important in our lives we, don't, we take the word of God for granted and we assume things for ourselves and we think you know it's okay, it's okay, it's okay but God says you know it's not okay, certain things are not okay for me you know the, 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 the sages say why was Moses so desiring? he was desiring because uh, uh, for him to go to the land and do a mitzvah or obey God's word was one of the greatest things. It was a blessing. I mean, I mean, how different it is for us as believers in the Lord. We are waiting to go to heaven so that we will get away from our responsibilities of the earth. But the Bible talks about being a blessing, doing a commandment, doing a mitzvah here while we are living on the earth. Yes. You know, when we take time to help the poor, when we take time to seek the Lord, when we take time to do our devotions, these, these, these are things that God expects us to do here. And you don't get this opportunity anywhere else. So if you don't focus on those things here on the earth, you're not going to focus it anywhere else. So the first thing we can learn from Moses' life that even though he had a deep walk with God, a deep revelation with God, at the time when it was come to walking into the promised land, he missed it. Why? Because he did not sanctify or honor the name of the Lord in the sight of the people. In chapter 4, it begins by the word, verse number 1 begins by the word harka. In Hebrew, it's the Hebrew word shema, which means to listen or to hear what what is what what does it mean it basically means to internalize don't just hear but listen 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 to what i'm saying you know i think jesus also used these words very regularly mm -hmm. he who has ears let him hear and understand let him hear and understand it's so in other words that if 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 we are people who are hearing god's word and not doing anything about it we truly are not shamaying we are we, 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 we are just listening and that listen is with no intention of doing I heard it's okay it's okay it's God's word and these casual passive listeners of God's word God's going to judge every word you heard every word you say God's going to take it into account I mean it's very important for us to understand so what it says over here listen Shema truly internalize what number one statues it's basically the end, end grade decrease. Why, why should you listen to the statues? What, what are you going to do with it? it, is, it the, the, the statues is, you have to listen to it for what? For the purpose to do them. So in other words, God is saying, the main reason I am asking you to shema, to listen, to internalize, is so that you would do it. Because if you don't do it, you will not get the point of it. You know, in, in, our, in, our, in our time, we want to understand. But God's word saying, no, I don't want you to understand. I want you to do it. It's when you do it, then the revelation of what you did begins to take place. It's a Greek philosophy. Greek philosophy, let me understand, then I will do. A biblical philosophy, a Hebraic mindset is basically, let me do. And as I do, revelation will come in so not learning but doing is the principal thing mm -hmm. so the focus of chapter 4 and all a book of Deuteronomy is not about learning it's not about 
uh, oh, I've learned so much. It's not about knowledge gathering. It's not about having degrees in the Bible. It is about, it is about application. If it's, what am I going to do with what I heard? You know, there are two extremes for it. One extreme is people want to get all the knowledge of the world and do nothing about it. And the other extreme is, oh, because God is wanting me to do, let me not get knowledge. It's better for me not to listen to it also. Both extremes are very bad. We need to always have the balance. And what is the balance? I'm here and I'm going to do it. Maybe I will fail, but it's okay. But I'll still make it. Now, it, 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 we, we, we can't beat ourselves. So here it says, you, 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 in other words, you have heard it long enough. But now, as you are entering in the land, you're going to do it. All this while you have experienced the presence of God. All this while you have seen the manna. You have ate the manna. You have experienced everything. But now as you are entering into the land. I'm not going to be there. But Joshua is there. Joshua is a type of Messiah. Yeshua himself. So he's going to help you get into the land. Now, now when, when he's going to let you get into the land. You're going to do it. Doing is a very important pivotal thing. See what it says in verse number 2. Verse number 2 it says that. You shall not add nor shall you subtract. In other words, but if you add or subtract is basically a type of you're improving God's word. So basically you're trying, no, this is not correct. Let me just try to modify it. Okay, so uh, it, 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 it ba basically means uh, adding is if you increase, you add extra, like, like, like uh, uh, what happened to Eve in the Bible, you know. God's, God never said that you shall not touch. She added the word touch. I don't know from where she got it. Maybe Adam must have added it. So that's how she got it. So, so, so in other words, the, the, there is a specific way the, God, the word of the Lord is put. And it's very important. And we need to recognize that. Tomorrow I'm going to talk about the word of God. I think so, one of the ways we add is giving the word our own interpretations. Yeah. Uh, and not actually searching the scriptures for what God intended it to be said. Yeah. Yeah, we, we give our own interpretations. We have our own ideas, and especially if we are people who uh, pray a lot or see, or we have this thing, you know, I fasted, I prayed, I got this revelation. I mean, all these things, is it in accordance to God's word, is the most important thing. I'm not sure about how the one interpretation is given, it's now on the sixth day, it's now moved on to Sunday. Yeah. You're adding to the. Absolutely. See, the, the, these are things that you don't have to need a revelation. Mm -hmm. Like I've, I've talked to people who have talked to me, you know, is it necessary for water baptism? I am not led by the Spirit of God. You don't have to be led by the Spirit of God. If God's word is true, it's already His Spirit is there. You just have to obey it. You don't need a deep revelation to do water baptism. You just do it. Why? Because the Bible tells so. It's the same thing with tithes, the same thing with offerings, it's the same thing with Shabbat. You don't need revelation for this. God is not going to waste his precious time with trying to explain to you all these things. Because one, one of the things, if you read this portion, is very clear. God is very, 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 very clearly saying that all these things, why am I giving it to you? Because I love you. That's it. All these commandments, all these mitzvahs, all these things I'm giving to you, these are good, these are not harmful, these are precious, and because I love you. Then, so it says first you should not add, then it says you should not diminish. Diminish basically means uh, you cannot scrape off, you cannot remove, you cannot erase. And, 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 and the thing about our translations in English, many of times our translations really don't bring out the correct meaning. Not because, so sometimes truly because there are no words to explain. It's hard to explain. But nowadays we have people who want to change the whole culture. We want to change history altogether. So what do I do if I want to change my history? Let's rewrite history. When you rewrite history into something else, the next generations don't even understand what has happened in the future generations. Okay, so, so we need to understand we are to keep or to guard these commands, which is impossible if we add or diminish the word of God. And one of the things we need to understand is that when we add or diminish God's word, it is a tactic of the enemy. This is what the enemy wants us to do. He wants us to, you know, you, you are under grace, you can do whatever you want. Okay? Like, 
the serpent came to the woman in Genesis chapter 3 verse 4 and said to the woman, you shall not surely die. For God knows that in the day you eat of it, your eyes will be open and you will be like God, knowing good and evil. God said, if you do or disobey, you will die. The serpent said, no, 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 you're not going to die. Nothing's going to happen. Nothing is wrong in doing, you know. There's nothing wrong. But do you want to follow God? Do you want to obey God? Then there, are, there, are, there is truth to the matter. Okay? So what did the serpent do? do? He, the serpent basically took away from the creator's word and he added to it. Mm -hmm. Who is the serpent? The Hebrew word for serpent is nakash. He's crafty. He's subtle. So when, when mankind listened to this lie or the craftiness of the enemy, mankind took in himself a part of this craftiness. In other words, when, when, when Adam and Eve ate of the fruit, the essence of the enemy came into them. Adam emulated the traits of the serpent. He started adding and taking away from God's word. Because you and I are made in the image of God. When you and I are made in the image of God, that means there is an essence of God in me. Because there is an essence of the Lord in me, my soul responds to the Spirit of God, to the Word of God. Who is the Word of God? The Word of God is Yeshua Himself. But when, 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 when we don't do what God's word tells us to do, we, we respond, we behave like the enemy, the deceiver. And the deceiver always wants us to be alone. Doesn't want us to be in the community. Be, sing a solo in the choir. That's the idea of the enemy. Don't be, because if you're in the choir, your voice is not going to be heard. So sing solo. Mm. I, 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 I don't want to be part of the crowd. I don't want to be part of the community. I want to do what I want to do. Why? Because it's all about me. But if you're walking with God, it's not about me, it's about Him. So here Moses, is, he likes the admonition uh, 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 of not adding and taking away uh, to the sin of Balpur. Baal you know what happened to Balpur. Balpur is the place in Numbers chapter 25 where we talked about uh, Balaam and how that whole thing happened. What, what happened in Balpur? What was the sin of Balpur? There was this mixing and the mingling taking place with the women of Midian. So what did they do? They mixed and mingled. So the enemy, what does he want us to do? He wants to mix and mingle. So when, when you add and subtract to God's word, you're basically mixing and mingling. You're, you're basically saying, you know, uh, I, I want to hear God's word, but I want to do God's word as I feel I want to do it. It's not the pure word of God. I just want to mix. I want to, uh, uh, I, I want to do it my way. I want to worship God, but I want to worship God my way. I want to follow God, but I want to follow God my way. I don't want to do it as, I, as God requires of me to do it. I don't think it is important because for me, it is all, it's because it's all, because I'm, 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 I'm not willing to die to myself. Are you with me? Yes. So, yeah. It's a lot of, the mixing and mingling, it's a lot of purity of just taking the word as it is and following it. Yeah. See, when we take God's word, as it is, and then we just follow it as it is, is purity. Yeah. That's a, that's a form of purity uh, that God has created man to be like. Mm -hmm. So when we don't do that, and we don't take the word in its pure form and obey it in its pure form without adding, without putting anything to it. Absolutely. Yeah. Then we lose the purity, and that's the next thing. I, 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 I,
whole case here by adding stuff to it. Yeah. So we are actually losing the purity of what the milk is all about. Flavor of milk is gone. Flavor of milk is gone. So, um, so we are how... also not going to <coughs> take the word and do it and become like the word of God himself, to be sure. We also do not have any purity. Yeah. So we try to suit the word the way we want. Because we are also to become like the word of God. Absolutely, we are supposed to be like the Word of God. But we can't be like the Word of God if you don't take the Word of God as it is. Mm -hmm. So, after this mingling that happened at, at, uh, with the Midianite women at Balpur, what did they do? They went on to sacrifice of their gods, and the Bible says they were destroyed from their midst. So, what happens? What is the result of mixing? This mixing with other seed is equivalent or it is a result of adding or diminishing of God's word. When you mix, mingle, what happens? It is like you are adding or subtracting from God's word. Mm -hmm. And when you do such things, you know what the Bible says is that you will be destroyed from the mist. You will be destroyed. Mm -hmm. Some people want to read other books about the word of God. Your other teachings about the word of God. I don't know how many people actually just ensure that this word is inside. Yeah. We don't have this Prashad basic pure form, so we cannot distinguish what other people are saying. See, books are good to read, but it should not take the place of the word of God. How many of us can just, you know, just get up in the morning without reading anything? Just just read the Bible. Take it Just take it and read it. I, I know we have the, the Bible in our uh, phones. But you know why I don't recommend people doing it on their phones? Because when you read it on the phones, you have other extracurricular activities also on the phones. A message pops up. WhatsApp pops, pops up. Facebook pops up. All these things pop up. So what happens? You're not giving your undivided attention when you're meditating on God's word. And find it, when you turn up forward, I've noticed you, you, you come to a very specific verse. It's not like when you have the whole book and you can just, you see the whole book at one time. You know, so you just turn one verse and that's all on your clothes. It makes a lot of difference to see the whole book and you can turn it anywhere in the book. And that makes a lot of difference. So the mixing and mingling is like adding and subtracting to God's word. And Moses tells them, reminds them that you saw what happened at Baal Pior, And you are a lie because you didn't do it. If you're standing here listening to my voice, you saw what happened. And if you're a lie, because you were not involved with the mixing and mingling. I mean, you should be thankful that if you're a lie, that means it's because of that. So, to keep these commandments is what will distinguish Israel from the nations. And uh, uh, in other words, the commandments will help us or the societies around Israel to understand what a sound and moral society it, Israel is. Why? Because of the commandments of God. The, and nations would acknowledge Israel as possessing wisdom and uh, understanding. But where did Israel get this wisdom and understanding? It didn't get it by itself. It didn't do anything. It's because God gave it to them. Because what was what was Israel's mission? It was to be the light. Okay. Verse number eight says that Moses points out that no other nation has laws such as these. What's so good about these laws? He says that these are righteous laws. These are just laws. So in other words, the commandments, the mitzvot, the, the, the word of God, these, these, are, these, these are not harsh ones. These are just. These are righteous. And verse number six, uh, 9 says, keep your soul diligently. Basically what is he tells Israel, their survival is dependent on keeping these instructions and remembering what they saw with their eyes at Sinai. So he's telling, he's telling Israel, you know, you're going to enter the land, but if you want to live, you want to survive in this land, keep your eyes on the word of God. Not just keep your eyes, remember, 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 remember. 
and he goes on to talk about in verse number 11 and 12 about what happened at Mount Sinai. See what it says in verse number 12. Uh, Deuteronomy chapter 4 verse 12. He says, The Lord spoke to you out of the midst of the fire. You heard the sound of the words, but you saw no form and only a voice. In other words, you know, you, you only heard the voice. Tradition says that they, they, they literally saw cloven tongues fall upon them. When you hear that, what, what, do you, what, what, what do you understand? It's Acts chapter 2. It's, 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 it's the reputation. They saw no one, but they knew he was in the midst. They, did, they, didn't, they didn't see a physical sign or form or miracle. They didn't have, but they knew that God was in the midst. And, and verse number 15 and 16 goes on to say, Take great heed to yourself, since they saw no form, that they were not to portray him using any type of image. So in other words, he's saying, you, there was no form, so don't have any form, don't have any shape, don't worship, don't venerate, don't do all those nonsense. Keep your eyes on the word of God. You know, every time we want several things, but God is saying, you don't need all these things. You just need to keep your eyes on me. Well, it's, it's, of course, the form of Jesus which we see today is not really the form. That's why we should not even have those kind of pictures in our homes. Because it doesn't even show a glimpse of who Jesus is. One scripture that they can refute that God is yeah. but there are other scriptures that clearly say that we don't put the Messiah will be behind. So it's just one scripture that especially Rabbi is putting so big. But there are other scriptures that very clearly indicate that the Messiah will be behind out of there. So he's basically going on to say in chapter four is that uh, take heed to yourself that you would not make a form. It should not be there should not be any image no male, no female and uh, verse number 19 says lest you lift up your eyes unto heaven and be drawn away and worship so in other words uh, don't, don't have any image from the sky, on the earth nothing, he says don't be drawn away, that means when, when you look at the sky you see this brightness and this magnific magnificence you know you, you, should, you should not be drawn away by this beauty of creation I, and and don't make an image of that and worship that because you, the one who is in you is brighter than all of these. Okay? So, and, and, and then, then what, what does he say? In other words, Israel, he's trying to say that, Israel, you receive your light from the Creator. And what is that light? That is the light that first appeared at the beginning. It was the light which was there even before the creation of the sun, the moon, and the stars. Okay? The, the, the nations do what is right in their eyes, but Israel, you're called to be a nation that does what is right in God's eyes. So in other words, you and I are also spiritually in Messiah like Israel. You, the, 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 your friends, your friends, family, they can all do whatever they want, but if you say you are Israel, then you need to do what God's word tells you to do. Isn't that amazing? That's what sets us apart. Yeah, that's what sets us apart. And then in verse number 20, he goes on to say, you know, he, he took you out of the iron furnace, out of Egypt. The term over there is the iron crucible, which is basically used to purify gold and purge foreign matter. Uh, the word furnace, it's the verb which means to purify, uh, repair or to correct. So in other words, even Egypt played a role in the purification of Israel. In other words, what, 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 what can we understand? Afflictions, difficulties, they all play an important role 
for us to be purified so that we can walk in the light of God. Isaiah 48 verse 10 says, Behold, I have refined you, but not as silver. I have tested you in the furnace of affliction. It's the same word furnace in, in verse number 20 of Exodus uh, of Deuteronomy chapter 4. So in other words, affliction is going to refine you. Affliction is the furnace from which Israel comes forth in the light of God. When you go through difficult times, it's not a bad thing, it's a good thing. It helps you walk in the ways of God. Amen? Amen. Verse number 21 and 22. It says that Moses was forbidden to go over to Jordan as a punishment of his error. He was to die out of the land, the east side of the Jordan. And we glean that Moses led the people through the wilderness, but Joshua led them into the land. Moses basically represents the law, led them through the desert, but Yehoshua, Yeshua leads them into the land. So what does that mean? Do we not need uh, Moses? No, it doesn't mean that. You know, uh, Mo you know they, they, they don't even they, they don't even take the bones they didn't even take the bones of uh, Moses into the land. They don't even know where his bones were. Because if they would have taken it, most probably they would have built a shrine. But in the land there is no bone for Moses. But, but yet, they still remember Moses. Moses is still remembered. His, the writings of Moses is remembered. You know, uh, uh, verse number 22 says that I must die in this land. That means out of the land. Rashi comments on this, says, Not even my bones shall be carried over Jordan to be laid to rest on this sacred soil as, will, as that that will happen to the bones of Joseph. In other words, Joseph's bones were taken into the land, but Moses' bones were not even fought. I mean, this is this is uh, really, really uh, interesting. We're not completely sure why Moses' bones were not permitted to be buried in the land. Maybe, like I said, people wanted maybe people would have built a shrine but the result is Moses is hidden from plain view of people but yet the Jews still accept Moses as the prophet mm -hmm. they believe his words even though they cannot see him mm -hmm. likewise they believe in the coming of Elijah even though he can't be seen you know Elijah was another guy you know he was just taken off nobody knows what, what's happened to him but both these characters they come to the Mount of Transfiguration during Yeshua's time Moses and Elijah so this is really 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 interesting Moses from Levi Elijah from Gilead and Gilead is a descendant of Josh, uh, Joseph so uh, it basically represents the two witnesses both that is uh, the natural and the the wild branch both are going to be one in the Messiah I mean this is this is really interesting and from 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 the from Gilead from the tribe of jo Joseph and who is Joshua by the way Joshua is related to Joseph I mean, this is this is really interesting. Here, here, here. Consider this. At one point, Moses concealed identity, while Josh Joseph always acknowledges his identity. In in Moses's lifetime, uh, there was one time that he didn't he didn't show. He didn't really reveal who he was. But Joseph at all times, he, he, he told who he was. Okay? There are those who are of the natural Israel who act like the nations. And there are those who are of the nations who strive to behave like the seed of Abraham. In the end, all must be grafted in through the Messiah. So to acknowledge who and what we are and behave accordingly, if 
we are to enter the land. So if you want to enter the land, you need to understand who you are. You can't just uh, be afraid of who you are. Here in verse number 23 of chapter 4, he says, Take heed. That means if Moses was not permitted to enter because of his error, Israel should note that God doesn't play favorites and they should be grateful that they are entering the land. As they are entering the land, you should be grateful that you are entering the land. And why? We need to understand that why God is an all-consuming fire. And the idea of the all-consuming fire has both uh, positive and negative connotations. And he goes on to say that he is a jealous God. That means he doesn't allow loyalty due to him to be given to someone else. Why is that important? In that time, none of the founders of the great heathen religions had any inclination of this idea of a jealous God. A God who would have none other gods. They were living in a time frame where, you know, okay, this God, this God, this God, it's all okay. But the God of the Bible is not like that. He's a jealous God. The Greece, Greek cultures, the Roman cultures, they, 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 they all had uh, different types of gods and goddesses and they were not jealous. Yeah. They, every, everything could be accommodated. That's why when Jerusalem fell, Rome was prepared to give the God of Israel a place in their list of pantheons. But the Jewish people said, no, 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 no. He cannot be put along with others. Why? Because he's a jealous God. That means truth cannot make any concession to falsehood. And it cannot compromise with it or tolerate it. So to, to, to do so would be to surrender to falsehood. And once done, falsehood basically expands. That's how the whole idea of Hanukkah takes place. What is Hanukkah about? No mixing and mingling because if I mix and mingle, I'm going to I'm going to miss it. It's all it's all gone. Are you with me? Yeah. So, as they are entering the land, we need to see that it was Josh Joseph who is a type of Yeshua who takes them into the land. We've heard the word, we've understood the word, and God is wanting us this morning to enter into the fullness of the word of God. And only Jesus can do that. Only Yeshua can do that. So my prayer is that this day, on this Shabbat, we would make an effort to say, Lord, I want to enter the land. What does that mean? I'm going to do. No more hearing. I'm going to do. You know, this morning for our Shavu class, we heard of how people did so many things for the sake of their faith. And I think it's time for us as a community to stand up and start doing what God's Word tells us to do. Enough of listening. Do what God's Word says. Apply it. Application. The time has come. Amen. Father, we want to thank you for this day. We want to thank you for your word. We pray, Lord, that even as you're focusing a lot on doing, I pray that your name would be exalted, O oh Father. We worship you. We bless you. In Yeshua's name we pray. This is the month of Av. The month Av is basically about the Father. Mm -hmm. And when you do God's word, mm -hmm. through the Son, he draws you closer yes. to the Father. Mm -hmm. So I pray that, understand, because next month is the month of Elul, yeah. when the king is in the field. Yeah. This month is the month where it's about the Father. It's about the Father. It's about the Father. And everything is about love. That's what Moses is basically saying. Oh, that you should have a heart to love the Lord your God. It's all about loving God. So when you're doing His commands, why am I doing it? Because I love the Lord. Why do I keep Shabbat? I love the Lord. Why do I do what I, God's Word tells me to do? Because I love the Lord. There is, there is no other reason. There, there should not be any other motivation for you to do God's Word. Amen. I love God. I love God. I love God. There is nothing else. It is not for salvation. It is not to have extra brownie points. It is because I love God. I love God. I love God. That's all the whole word is about. And that's what, that's, that's what in chapter 6 we begin to see. He says, Hear O Israel, the Lord our God, the Lord is one. Love the Lord with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your strength. Loving is all about loving God. 
Uh, I'm just reminded, you know, the sugar lesson that we were brought and going through about uh, lamed. Uh, it is the part of the Tama, and I was reminded of how Rabbi Shapira said, you are, there is no concept of good, good disciple, bad disciple, mediocre disciple. Either you are a disciple or you are not a disciple. So a heart of the Tama, it's, Tama is also connected with the heart, with love. So either you are doing or you are not doing. If you are doing, you are a disciple. If you are not doing, you are not a disciple. Just by claiming myself I am a disciple of Yeshua does not make me a disciple. It's only doing, that's why uh, he said, no, if you love me, you will obey my commandments. It's as simple as that. There is no, nothing to explain, nothing to describe. You do and you become a disciple. Amen. Shalom. Uh,